This is Tamara from mowgliblog.com, and in this video, I'm going to be demonstrating how to make the pineapple basket, which is a free pattern found on Moogly. Please follow the link in the video description below. That will take you to mooglyblog.com, where you'll find links to both the written pattern as well as all the supplies you need to make it. To make the pineapple basket, we'll be using Red Heart Scrubby Smoothie and a Brittany H hook. There are also a few other things that can help with your basket. I've got a bit of plastic canvas here that I'll be talking about later. I find stitch markers very helpful with this pattern. And of course you'll need a needle and a pair of scissors like you usually do. And then one other unusual thing I used in this pattern was a bit of heavy starch and that will come in quite a bit later as well. So let's go ahead and begin. Okay, so here we have the finished pineapple basket. You can see it's got nice firm sides. That's where our plastic canvas will come in. To make this basket, actually start by making the green portion and then setting it aside for later, and then we begin the yellow portion. And we start right in the middle here and create an oval of single crochets. Then we work a row through just one of the loops to leave a loop hanging out back here, come up to single crochet along the sides, work in only one loop again, and then come down to crochet. We're actually crocheting at this point in this direction. Let me set it down here so you can see it a little more clearly. At this point, then we crochet the bobbles and then finally work around here that creates the seam to finish it up. So that's just a little preview and now we'll actually start making it together. Okay, so as I just mentioned, we actually begin with the crown portion of the pineapple. That's the green leaves on top. And what we're going to be doing is creating one long strip of leaves that is then rolled up, as you can see here, and applied to the basket. So let's go ahead and make this strip of leaves together. We're going to start with leaf number one. We start with a slip knot on our hook, just as we normally do for most projects, and then we begin with a chain five. So one, two, three, four, and five. There we are. Then we skip the chain closest to the hook and slip stitch in the next. I like to work into the back of the chains here. I think it gives a really nice finished look to the leaves, but if you prefer to work under the top two loops of your chains, you can do it your way too. Now I'm going to, like I said, skip this chain right here closest to the hook and slip stitch in the next. So I'm just going to go under that back hump right there and make a slip stitch like so. I'm not going to be working back into the slip stitch, so it's okay to make it a little bit tighter if you want to. Then I will single crochet in the next chain. There we are. Half double crochet in the next one. There we are. And finally, double crochet in the last chain. And that is going to be our first tiny little leaf, just like that. Of course, that's not where we end. We're not going to break. Like I said, we're going to make one long strip of leaves that can be wound up. So for leaves two and three, we're just going to go ahead and repeat leaf one. So that means we just start chaining five again. One, two, three, four, five. Skip that chain closest to the hook. Come down to the next one with a slip stitch. There we are. And then, oops, it was a single crochet in the next one. We've got to build up our height gradually here. Half double crochet in the next. And double crochet in the next one. And you can see this is where working into that back hump works out really, really well. Because then I've got a nice smooth transition from leaf to leaf. Leaf three, that was leaf one. Leaf two, leaf three is the exact same thing again. So let's do that one one more time. We chain five, whoops, easier if you got the hook in the yarn, there we are, two, three, four, five, slip, skip the first chain, slip stitch in the next, there we are, single crochet in the next one, my hook keeps wanting to yarn over, there we are, now I can yarn over, half double crochet in the third one here, and then Again, double crochet in that last one. And if this starts twisting around, that's all right. Just kind of try and pull them out straight and you'll be able to find that last chain to work into hanging out right there at the base. All right, so we've made three leaves already. We've got three little leaves for our crown. 
So it's time for leaf number four. That one's just a little bit different. We're going to start with a chain of seven. It's time to start making a little bit taller leaves that'll stick out in the middle there. So let's chain seven together. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then we're going to do the same thing. Skip the chain closest to the hook, slip stitch in the next. There we are. Single crochet in the chain after that. And then we're going to half double crochet in the next two chains. So there's one and two. There we are. And then finally, we'll double crochet in the last two. So one a little bit of a strings attached to my yarn there. There we go. One and two. Oop. All right. So that is leaf number four. Uh, leaf is no leaves number five and six are exactly the same. So I won't repeat that. You get the, get the idea. Um, so then we'll jump down to leaf number seven, which begins with a chain of ten. One, two, three four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. And then it's going to be very simple. similar. We'll skip the first one, slip stitch in the next, single crochet in the next, half double crochet in the next three, one, two, Three. There we are. Then we're going to double crochet in the next three. One double crochet. Two double crochets. And three double crochets. And then finally, we've got one more chain hanging out there, and we're going to work a treble crochet in that one. So that's how you make leaf seven. And then right away, we're going to go just a little bit taller for leaf number eight. We're going to jump to 12 chains. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, 10, 11, and 12. And then again, we skip the first chain, slip stitch in the next one, single crochet in the next two, one, two, there we are. Half double crochet in the next three. One, two, and three. There we are. You can see I finally ran out of the yarn. I pre-pulled off the skein. There we are, so we'll pull up a little bit more. I always like to pull from the outside of the skein um, unless it's one of those ones that's really just set up for pulling from the middle, I find it just adds a little bit less wear and tear to the yarn. There we are. All right. So I've got my three half double crochets. Then I am going to double crochet in the next three stitches. One, two, and three. And then finally, I will treble crochet in the last two. So I'll yarn over twice, go into that next chain there, work them off two loops at a time, and then one more treble. So I yarn over twice, go into that last little chain hanging out there. And then finally, the last leaf is leaf number nine, which is identical to leaf number eight, which we just made. So if you followed the directions, like I say, go to the written pattern in the link, then when you get to the end here, you'll actually have nine leaves total. Like I say, we skipped a couple right now just for the sake of time, but you get the idea. I've actually demonstrated how each one of these leaves is made. So to finish crocheting the leaf strip or the crown, what we're going to do is we're going to turn and work across the base of each of these leaves to create a little bit more stability here and to give us, if I pull this up, this part of the crown here. That'll be a little easier to sew together and attach to our basket. So what we're going to do is I'm going to chain one, and then anytime I'm working into a treble, 
stitch right here, I want to work four half double crochets across. So I'm going to yarn over and just sort of pick three even spots along the treble itself. So we'll put one right there. This is just like working to the edge of a blanket if you've worked a lot or a napkin or anything else you might work an edge around. Oops, let me try that one again. Can be a little fiddly as you see but worth taking your time here this will create a really pretty crown so like i said i want four half double crochets worked across the base of each treble but i found if i work three into the treble itself and then the fourth one sort of right in that last chain where we worked that last stitch that gives a really nice even distribution so this one right here this was our Leaf nine and eight, we'd work half double crochets, four half double crochets across the base of each of those. Leaf seven also ended in a treble crochet, so I want four again. So one, two. And if you find that for your, with your gauge or for whatever reason, you wanna add more stitches or less stitches right here, the actual stitch count doesn't really matter. It's just about working evenly across here so you get a nice roll up. It's not like it needs to fit or be a particular size. So if you're playing with the size of your basket, you may want to alter the length of your leaf strip as well. So again, this is just the basic written pattern, but you can alter it to suit you. So once we've worked across all of our leaves that have a treble crochet for the last stitch, then we get to the ones that ended with a double crochet. So then we drop down to three half double crochets. And again, I found it worked really nicely to just put two of them in the side of the stitch itself. There we are. And then put that third one in that last chain. Just gives it a really nice solid feel, as you can see. So these three all ended with trouble, or excuse me, with doubles as well. So I will just work three half double crochets in the base of each of these leaves. So there's two. Oops. Just take your time and get these worked in there. Like I say, if you find you missed one, but it's laying really nice and flat, doesn't really matter. The stitch count itself isn't so important here. I just wanna show you what it'll look like as I get all the way across here. So I've got just two more leaves to do. And like I say, if you've changed the size of your basket, you can play with the number of leaves. I've got instructions for four different sizes of leaves in there, so you can totally customize it if you like. There we are. Lost track of where I was. So we're on the, our last leaf here. So I'll just work my three half, half double crochets, and then we'll be just about done with our leaves all together until we're ready to assemble the basket. So when I get to my last leaf there, I will go ahead and cut the yarn, but I do want to leave about 18 inches or so. You don't have to bother measuring. You just wanna make sure to leave a nice long length that you'll be using then when you assemble your basket to sew the base of your leaves together and to sew it to the basket itself. So I'm just gonna pull that tail through my stitch here. There we are, and finish that off. So you can see we've got a really nice strip of leaves here, a little bit shortened, but shorter than this one, but you certainly see how they come together. And then I will set this aside and pull it back up when it's time to assemble this one. Although for assembly, I will be showing you a fully formed uh, row of leaves. So you can look forward to seeing that again soon, but we'll put this one aside and get started with the basket portion itself. Okay, now it's time to begin the actual basket portion of our basket. You can see I've switched to the yellow lemony colorway and I've got a slip knot on my hook. To begin round one, we'll start with a chain of seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now we're going to be working all the way around this chain to create an oval. So again, I like to start by working into the back hump. I'm going to start with a single crochet in the second chain from the hook. So just as with our leaves, we'll skip that first one, come down to the next one and work a single crochet. Then I'm going to single crochet in the next four chains. So I will keep working in the back hump for these. One, two, 
three and four and that leaves one chain remaining in that chain this is where we're going to wrap around to the other side of our foundation chain we're going to work three single crochets all right into this last chain so I'll show you how that works work the first one here just looks pretty normal then when we work the second one we can kind of work it into the side almost of the chain and this is a good port time to uh, just put that tail over on the other side so you're almost working over that a little bit and then as we make that third one you can see we've actually flipped over and now we're working across the base of our foundation chain so we've got three stitches coming around that curve right there and then after that we're going to work single crochets in the base of the next four stitches so at this point since we worked into the back hump I love this now I've got two stitches or two loops rather two strands we'll say that two strands of yarn there to go under for each of these stitches and it just creates a really nice solid base for our basket so there's two three and four and then you can see we're back here at the base of that very first stitch we made since we worked three on this end we want to have three in this end so that means we need to work two more into that base of that first stitch so there's one and there's two and you can see that kind of pulls me around the corner there and then here's a really good tip and this is one of the reasons I recommended stitch markers for this pattern is every time you get to the last stitch of one of these ovals go ahead and put a stitch marker in that very last stitch before you join this is also a great time to count your stitches for this round one we should have 14 total so well let's count them together we've got one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen when you're making ovals it's really easy to accidentally oops this one's not closed let me get that stitch marker closed there so it stays put there we go when you're making ovals it's really easy to accidentally end up working into the slip stitch um, I've done it myself a million times I did it when I was trying to prepare for this basket so having that stitch marker so you always know when you're in the last stitch of your oval is super helpful you can see the slip stitch I just made it would be very easy to mistake that for a stitch itself so having that stitch marker is a huge help now after this it's just sort of increases and in working single crochet in the in the round to create an oval so let's just work the first few rows together and then I'm gonna switch over to a step out I've made where we're a little bit further along so let's begin round two we're gonna start with a chain one then we work two single crochets in the first stitch one two there we are then we single crochet in the next four one two three four then we work two single crochets in each of the next three one two oops I forgot to work the second one in that first one I just talked about it and then I got lost in my own thoughts there for a minute so two stitches in that one two stitches in the next one one two and then two stitches in that third one there one two I'm working kind of tightly here you can see I'm pulling through my stitches but that's okay in a basket you want it, your stitches to be nice and tight so then we single crochet in the next four stitches one two three and four and then finally we two, have two single crochets in each of the last two stitches and I know I'm in the right spot because that's where my stitch marker is so one two in there and then two in that very last stitch and I pro I won't bother moving the stitch marker till I get that second one made there we are and I can pull that stitch marker right out and move it up to the last stitch for this round and I'll just continue doing that on every round now like I say I don't want to sit here and make single crochets for three hours while you watch me make the base of the basket so let me set this one down here and you can see here we've just worked ovals all the way around you can see there's my my join it's subtle but it's there and there it is coming up the side of the basket too and I'll demonstrate that in a minute let me pull up oops 
this little step out I've made right here. And you can see I've even labeled it with my post-it note. It says round six. I took this one to round six. If you want to make the basket this size, then you go all the way out to 10 rounds for the base. But again, it's just simple single crochet. And as I noted in the pattern, if you want to make a tinier basket, a smaller pineapple basket, you can actually stop making this oval at just about any spot you wanted. Of course, I wouldn't, you know, start stop at round two with a teeny tiny one, but I think round six would make a really nice small basket. The important part for the outside is just to have a mini multiple of two, which you're guaranteed to have with this. So I've got my last stitch marked. Let me get my hook back in the loop here. And we're going to pretend that we've gotten all the way out to round six or however big you wanted your basket to be. After that, that's when it's time to switch over to round 11. So at whatever point you're in the basket, go ahead and switch out to round 11. We're going to start with a chain one, and then we're going to single crochet in the front loop only of each stitch around. So what does that mean? If you haven't worked front loop only, back loop only before, it's totally dependent on the crocheter. So I'm sitting right here, sort of facing the camera as you are. So to me, this is the front loop of this stitch, and this is the back loop. If I were to turn and work back the other direction for some reason, not that I will with this project, but that would change then this would be the front loop, and that would be the back loop. It always depends on just where you are as the crocheter. So this doesn't stay the back, the front loop. If I turn it this way, it becomes the back loop. Does that make sense? So you always wanna work under just that front loop in this round. So again, this is round 11 with my hook. One more time back in that loop there. We've got our chain one, and then like I said, I'm going to work in the front loop only of each stitch around with single crochets. So when I put my hook in there, I just bring it right up between those two loops. This first one's a little tight because I slip stitched to it, but the rest should be quite a bit easier. So there's a single crochet, and I'm gonna do the same thing on the next one. Just go under the front loop and single crochet. And I'm going to do that all the way around. When I do that, of course, that means the back loop is left unworked. And that's going to come in at the very end when we assemble our basket. So I'm just gonna to continue to single crochet all the way around here. But before I finish this row, let me show you, you can see that back loop right there waiting for us. What, we, what happens when we crochet in the front loop only, besides leaving that back loop, which we'll need to use later, it creates the sides. You can see how it's sending the fabric upwards away from the base of our basket. This is going to be the interior sides right here of the basket. So we're working up this direction right now. So we're actually going to be working from the inside of the basket at this point. So I'm going to continue working front loop only single crochets all the way around here. When I get to the end, I will join with a slip stitch and then we can continue on with our pattern. So I'll see you at the end of round 11. Okay, so here I am at the end of round 11. Now, if you've made the full size basket, you'll have 68 stitches in this round, just as you did in the previous round. And indeed how, what, that's what you'll have for all the rounds from here on out. It'll be 68 stitches because you'll just be working evenly. So I've got my single crochets in the front loop only, and I want to show you how nicely those back loops are hanging out there and what a great ridge it creates to create the side of our basket. It's just one of my favorite techniques when I make baskets. I love using front loop only and back loop only to help create the structure. So I'm going to go ahead and slip stitch to finish that off. And then for the next, oh gosh, what is it? It'd be the next eight rounds, rounds 12 through 19, we're just going to chain one and single crochet in each stitch around. So we chain one to begin the round and then we just single crochet. And now we're gonna be going under both loops. And this is, like I said, this is just creating that interior of the basket right here. That's, that's those rounds of single crochet right there. That would be round 11 we just made where that fold is. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, and 19. So we're just going to work single crochet on up the sides of our basket. So I'm going to do that for a little bit while you go do that, and then we'll come back together for round 20. Okay, so now I'm gonna pretend with my little swatch here that I've gotten all the way through round 19. Again, on the full size basket, that would be this whole interior section right here. So now we're going to demonstrate round 20. Round 20 is again, single crocheting in each stitch, but one little twist, this time we're going through the back loop only of each stitch. So before where we went under the front loop, this time we just want the back loop. So to do that, you want to insert your hook right in the middle of that V at the top of each stitch and just go under that very back loop to make a single crochet, just like that. 
So you're going to do that all the way around, and this time it will leave that front loop sort of hanging there unused. And we're not going to come back and use this one. We'll come back and use that, that one hanging out back here at the end, but we're not going to use this one. What this one does is we start creating that fold so we can come over and make the outside of the basket. So you can see this little ridge right here that's created by having those front loops unworked. So that's what we're doing in round 20. Otherwise, we're just single crocheting all the way around, so I'll see you when it's time for round 21. Okay, so when you've reached the end of round 20, you should have this loop of front loop only loops, I guess, left behind. And now, like I said, this is actually where we're going to fold over and work the outside of the basket. So it looks a little weird and wonky right now, sort of almost like a bowl, but as we work back down, this upper lit that little ridge there of front loops only it's going to become the top and we're going to work our way back down to the base of our basket here so we started from the inside worked all along the inside and now we're finally making that outside layer so this is just four rows and mostly single well I shouldn't say mostly they're half single crochet again the other half are going to be small bobbles so I'm going to demonstrate those for you right now to begin row 21 and row 23 we're going to start with the chain one then we single crochet in the first stitch, just going to right, right under both those loops, regular single crochet. And then our first small bobble. A small bobble for this pattern is a double crochet, three together that you're pushing forward, all worked into the same stitch. That's a lot of words, now let's make it. We're gonna start by yarning over, going into the next stitch and pulling up a loop. Then we yarn over and pull through two and stop with two loops left on the hook. Then we yarn over again and go right back into that same stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, stop with three loops left on the hook. So that's two double crochets that we've begun. Let's start a third. We yarn over, we go into that same stitch, pull up a loop again, yarn over and pull through two, and now with four loops left on the hook, this is where we yarn over and pull through all four loops. Now, the trick about bobbles is they want to push back to the other side. So as I go to make a single crochet in the next stitch, it's going to want to push the bobble that way, which might be fine if you're making something two-sided, but since we're making a basket, we want the bobble to come towards us, to the outside of the basket here. So just go ahead and, as best you can, fold the bobble forward a little bit, and you can use your non-hook hand to help with that and then go into the next stitch to make a single crochet. And by making this crochet, this single crochet a little tighter than you might normally, pulling it down nice and low, you don't wanna make it so tight you can't get back into it, but you do wanna make it a tight one, that will really help push that bobble out so we can get that great texture there. So that was our repeat. We single crochet, then bobble, single crochet, then bobble. So let's make another one. We just wanna make sure we have that bobble on the second side nice and tight there and actually having it tight on the first side will help push that up forward as well. So let's make one more of those small bobbles together. We yarn over, go into the next stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through two, yarn over, go into the same stitch, and work until we have three loops left on the hook there. Then we yarn over for our final one. And then when we've got four loops left on the hook, that's when we yarn over and pull through all four loops. Then of course push it forward a little bit as best you can and single crochet in the next stitch and we just continue that pattern all the way around when we get to the end that last stitch will have a bobble worked into it so what you want to do is just make sure that when you slip stitch to that first single crochet you made that that first single crochet is nice and tight so that's how you make rows 21 and 23 24 excuse me 22 and 24 are similar, but we're gonna start with a bobble in the first stitch and then a single crochet in the next. So let me pull up the finished basket here so we can take a look. This is our first row of bobbles here, row 21, or round 21, I should say. So for round 22, we work a bobble into each single crochet and a single crochet into each bobble so that we get this offset pattern. So now that I've demonstrated that, you know how to make rows 21, 22, 23 and 24 and now we're going to go to some footage I took of this full-size basket a few days ago so you can see the assembly. 
Okay, so now it's almost time to finish assembling our pineapple basket, but one of the tools I wanted to point out that I used for this is plastic canvas. And these sheets are by Doris, and I have linked out to those. If you follow the link in the description, you'll find a link to this plastic canvas specifically. I like these sheets because they're a little softer. Some plastic canvas can be really stiff. This one just seems it'll be a little bit softer and more bendable, but it's still going to give this basket the structure I need. Now, I cut two long strips, so I kept... Um, actually, I guess it would be the full length here, 13 and a half inches long. And I cut two strips that were one and seven eighths inch wide. So how did I determine one and seven eighths inch? That's what happens to be exactly what fits between this flap in our basket here. So when we made our, you remember we used our back loop only and front loop only loops to create the shape that would fold over in order to add some stiffness to the basket. That's where I'm going to add these strips of plastic canvas. So one strip wasn't quite long enough to go all the way around, but if you cut two strips and just let them overlap on the sides, then that's going to give us a lot of structure. So after you've cut those two strips, let me set this aside here. Like I said, we're just going to overlap them and put them, sandwich them right in between our layers. And then you can see I've already started single crocheting around. This would be round 25 in the assembly. And so I'm working into row 24, which was our last round we made right here, and the back loop only left behind in round 11. Okay, so that is that loop right there that's still behind. So let me show you how I do that. I've got a stitch marker here holding my loop open. So I'll just pull that out of the way. Pull my loop down a little bit more reasonably sized here before I put it on the hook. There we go. Okay. And then, like I said, I just slip these right in between the layers and it's a little fiddly at first if you want to try and hold it down or only hold one in there until you get around and add the other, whatever is most convenient for you. Then I'm just going to go through the next stitch here of the previous row and then going right over, make sure this is sandwiched in between. I'm going to find that next back loop only that got left behind there. And single crochet through both of them and that just sandwiches the plastic canvas in there and gives us just the right amount of stiffness even though it's two layers here on the sides you can see you've got two layers there it doesn't add any extra really bulk or any weirdness it isn't pulling out and that's one of the reasons I mentioned the softness of this plastic canvas if it was really stiff it might try and create peaks or you know push out on the sides of our basket but with this nice soft stuff it really just adds a tremendous amount of structure to our basket as you can see without, you know, without causing any weirdness or weird shaping. So I'm just going to continue single crocheting all the way around here, making sure that I trap both my layers there right in between my rows until I've got about three inches or maybe four or five even left, whatever I feel comfortable with before I add that stem. So let's go ahead and jump to the stem now. Okay, now I want to take another look at, I keep calling it the stem, but the crown, the leaves, whatever you want to call them, the green part of the pineapple that goes up top there. I've already demonstrated how to make this at the beginning of the video, but I wanted to show you one more thing I do before I applied it to my pineapple basket. I just took this um, heavy starch, and I suppose there's probably several brands and probably a few different scents that you can choose from. This just happens to be what I picked up at my local store. And I like this because I sprayed both sides of my crown, my pineapple crown with it. And I didn't use an iron. You don't have to use an iron at all to use spray starch. I just did a light spray on each side. And the reason I brought up this gross looking plastic bag is because I just wanted to point out you will want to put something underneath it. Something disposable like this. I think this is actually the bag that my plastic canvas came in. So I just reused that and went ahead and put it under the leaves. And I just sprayed both sides and then I just let it air dry. And you can see it didn't make it crazy stiff. You know, these leaves aren't standing out straight or anything, but it did give it just that little extra bit of stiffness that I like um, in my leaves just to give them a little bit more life and make them a little bit more accurate without making them crazy stiff. If you really wanted them crazy stiff, of course, you could keep adding layers of the spray starch. Um, just keep adding it until you're happy with it. But I would be careful because eventually it can add a little bit of a kind of a shiny white coating. So you don't want to add too much, but a couple sprays on each side is usually plenty. So now I can get rid of this bag. I've let it air dry. It's not Nice and dry. You can see this is where, well, I would have been finished off this side right there. So this is my right side of my crown and I'm ready to start rolling it up. I've left those few inches I talked about left 
unworked on my basket so I can still get into the inside there. So what I'm going to do at this point is I'm going to take my crown and I'm going to start rolling it. And I want to roll it so that it's right side out. I just thought that looked a little nicer. Um, but you can try it different ways. Try rolling it, uh, try rolling it this way, try rolling it that way, decide what you like best. But we want to start with the biggest leaf and just start rolling it right at that bottom edge, that last row we made of half double crochet that gives us our solid edge. We want to make sure that those end up just as flat there as we can make them. Sort of like if you've made um, crochet flowers before, a lot of crochet flowers use this technique where you make the petals and sort of roll them up. It's definitely where I got the idea. So we're just gonna really carefully roll that around there until we've got a nice flat bottom of our crown, like so. With our, We want our little leaves on the outside so that it's accurate to a pineapple crown. And then what we can do is take that last long edge, that last long tail we left, get that on our stitch marker, or not our stitch marker, what am I saying? This is a yarn needle. Get it on our yarn needle. I happened to glance at a stitch marker that was sitting here, as noticed it as I was picking it up. All right, so. We've got our yarn on our yarn needle here. I'll tuck that little edge out of the way. We'll take care of that later, that little one there. And then I'm just going to start sending the needle through these bottom stitches. You can see I went all the way across there. And I just wanna pull that through, not crazy tight, just a little bit. And then I'm gonna come over here and go through these again, sort of end up maybe on this side of the, where I began. And I'm just going to keep doing that. And I really want to just secure the bottom of this pineapple as best I can. I don't have to go crazy. I don't have to go through every you know pair of stitches here, but enough to get it to where it's going to stay together. And you wanna make sure then that you've gone through every layer across, maybe not every time, but you know, at least a few times. So just take your time and go back and forth here until you feel like your crown is really, really secure. So I'm gonna take a few more stitches on mine, I think, and then I will see you when we're ready to sew it onto our basket. Okay, so now we're ready to sew our crown onto our pineapple bowl. Now, if you'll recall, we stopped when there were a few inches left here before we've finished up that final seam there. So when we look at our pineapple, you can see that right there is gonna be the top where I wanna put my crown which is why I waited till this point to add it. So with it open here, we'll be able to stick our fingers in there and really sew the crown on very easily. Well, much easier than it would be if we'd already sewed it closed. Before you do that though, you do wanna turn it and make sure that it's you know gonna show up from the top just the way you like. So kind of turn it, find where you think the leaves look best. I think right there looks pretty darn good. We've got a good variety of leaf sizes there. So I'm just gonna go ahead and hold that right up there Stick my fingers in here in between this layer, get that string out of the way there, and just sort of eyeball it and start sewing it on. I'm just going to go through this outer layer here. Let me see if I can kind of turn it towards the camera. I'll go through this outer layer here where I want to be attached and then through my crown and just sort of whip them right together. Just sort of eyeball it. With these very simple, this sort of simple whip stitch technique too, if I make a mistake, if I realize, oh, I've sewn it you know, too high or too, too far to one side or too far down, I can just pick those stitches right out using my yarn needle. So that's why I like to just keep this stitch really simple, just in case, because there's lots of times when I'll be sewing something on and I say, oh, you know what, that's just ever so slightly off and I end up redoing it a couple times and that is very, very normal. So. Sewing it together here on camera, a little bit of a risk. We'll see how it turns out. And then one thing too I wanna do is once I've got around here, around the top a little bit, I'm gonna just check and make sure that that's still, yep, that's still pretty much in the middle. And you can see it's hitting the table a little bit down here and that's okay too. It'll be a little bit of support. This is meant to you know, lay down as a basket, so that's okay. But if I want to make this really, really secure, what I can do at this point here, before I've gone too far, is I can go, let's see, we'll just go right through this section here in the yellow, and I'm going to just take a little stitch through the plastic canvas as well. And that will, just like it helps hold up the sides of our bowl, that will add just a little extra sturdiness to our crown here. So you can see I've got the whole bowl upside down. Now I've just flipped the whole thing upside down 
to make it that little bit easier. Oops, and you can see that's not good. I actually went through the top there. I won't be able to sew that. So like I was talking about, you make a mistake, you just pull your needle off, send your yarn needle right through there. There we go. No harm done. And put it right back on the needle and keep sewing. So you just want to take your time with this part. Um, I know at this part of a project, when I'm this close to the end, I tend to want to hurry up and get it done because I want to have it all finished and show off what I've made. But when you're sewing the pieces together, just kind of take your time. Don't be afraid to take out stitches that maybe didn't end up exactly where you wanted them to. That's okay. There we go. That's better. So I can double check it there, sort of make sure everything's hanging right. I'm still nicely centered at the top and that's working out pretty good. I'm just going to give it a little extra tug to make sure I've got that tacked down and that this still stretches over there. Yep, that'll work out fine. So I can keep on going around. And just by putting that extra stitch through the plastic canvas, that'll help add just that little extra sturdiness to our, our pineapple crown. So you can see I'm about halfway through, actually more than that, I'm almost back at the beginning here. So I could go around a couple times, definitely, um, you know, if this was something I was putting, like I say, in a kid's room or something where I thought children, you know, especially smaller children would be interacting with it quite a bit, I might add a few more stitches just for extra sturdiness, um, go around there one more time, but you get the idea now. So there we have it. The crown is sewn on and all that's left to do is finish up that final seam down there and of course weave this end in so I'll just I'm probably gonna take a few more stitches before I finish it off but I'll just weave the end up through here and probably trim it off here in the center so you won't be able to see it then I'll finish this up and weave in that end and we'll be all set so I'll be right back with a finished basket here you can see the finished one I've woven in those last couple ends and I went ahead and actually wove that end of the crown in between there totally hidden before I finished up that seam and I have a finished pineapple basket. Now, if you didn't wanna use the plastic canvas, you could skip that portion, but it would just make the sides a little bit softer. So go ahead and play with this pattern however you like. Now that you've seen how it comes together, you can change the size, maybe change the colors, make it into some other fruits, and have a lot of fun with it. I hope you've enjoyed this pineapple basket and that you give Red Heart Scrubby Smoothie a try. Don't forget to go to the link in the description. Again, there you'll find both the right and left-handed versions, so if you happen to land on the wrong one, you'll find it there, as well as links to all the supplies you need. Thank you so much for watching, and don't forget to subscribe.